He's taking the food right out of their mouths. Hi, this is Scott Ott, and this is Bill Whittle now. And Bill, uh, the Trump administration is about to promulgate some rules that would make it more difficult for states to essentially bypass the federal requirement that recipients of federal nutritional assistance uh, must be pursuing work and or vocational training. Um, the estimates on how many people this will affect vary widely from in the neighborhood of, of 700, 750 thousand people who may lose what used to be called food stamps is now called uh, the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program, or SNAP. Um, Urban Institute says uh, some 3.7 million people could suffer from these cuts. Uh, Bill, Republicans have long desired to cut back on these kind of federal assistance programs, which are, in this case, channeled through the states. But man, 2020 is an election year. Why pursue this now? Because it's the right thing to do. Uh, that would be my first guess. The, the American people have been and remain the most generous people on the world in the world by an enormously wide margin. Enormously wide margin. People will often talk about that the U.S. federal government's uh, you know, uh, contributions to foreign aid are stingy compared to the size of our budget, but that, that completely removes the private sector donations, which are, which, which are the, the, the envy of the world. And and I think that generosity is still intact. I think Americans have a soft spot in their heart for people who are down and out and who are trying to get back on their feet again. I think that's part of the American experience. I think there's hardly an American out there that doesn't have some sense of what that would be like. But that's not what we have. That's what we were promised. That's what we warned them against. But that's not what we have. What we have now is a situation where the federal government continues to keep more people in a state of poverty desperation and dependence for their entire lives. And when you talk about means testing or any kind of thing like that, where you're asking people to go and look for work, you're not demanding that they find work, but you're certainly demanding that they look for work in exchange for this assistance, then what you're actually doing is an enormous kindness to those people because you are making sure that the only people that get these benefits now are the people who genuinely cannot find work for whatever reason. And I would refer you back simply to the Bill Clinton administration when there were talks about cutting the welfare rolls by means testing. And every single uh, Democrat in the country and some Republicans, too, said that pretty soon we'll see six or seven million kids starving on the streets of America, pencil thin arms, you know, holding out little cups, begging for rice. And uh, it turned out that didn't happen. What happened was that the people who um, had just filed for food stamps and were just getting free free food stamps or free money decided that it wasn't worth the game anymore and stopped doing that. So I don't see what the problem is here. And well, I think part it's of the long problem overdue. is that the Brookings Institute uh, did a study last year and they said that people who are most likely to be hurt by this or the, or the ones perhaps that you might have the most sympathy for are people who are actually trying to work and in fact working sporadically. But the requirement each month is that they be able to log some 20 hours per week and they can't always do that. And so as you have previously pointed out in the past, you've been in times when you were struggling, you know how hard it is to get a paycheck. Here's some guy or some woman out there struggling and maybe gets in, you know, 17 hours this week, 22 next week, 15 the next week, and is doing everything he or she can. And yet that baseline nutritional assistance gets taken away because they're not meeting the, you know, big monster government minimum requirements. My understanding was, was that in order to um, continue these benefits, you had to be looking for work. Is that right? You have to be able to log these 20 hours a week. And that's what the Brookings Institute is saying. If you're not able to do that, um, you're either working or you're pursuing vocational training. But if you're not able to get sufficient amount of those hours logged in, then you don't qualify. If you get, if you need 20 hours a week, I want to make sure I understand this. You need, you need 20 hours a week in order to qualify for this program or in order to or in order to be disqualified from the program? In, in order to, to qualify for the program, you have to be, and, and I'll give you some more caveats in a minute, but um, in order to qualify for the program, you need to be able to log a certain number of hours of vocational training or work. And there are people who are kind of in that in between. They're in a transitional phase from being completely out of work to being fully employed. And, um, you know, trying to work as well as do vocational training when your work hours may not be something where you're going in and punching a clock reliably from eight to five can be mm -hmm. quite a struggle. It seems to me that uh, the Brookings Institute is saying that we're going to hurt the people that are best trying to do what the government wants them to do. 
Well, let me just preface this by saying many times in the past year when we've been doing the show, I've had uh, members write me uh, and send me articles or, or other sources of information that clarified situations that I was not terribly well versed in. So I'm going to speak about this from a, from a theoretical point of view, and I don't know the details of this law, so undoubtedly I'll be hearing back about this. But if what you're saying is true, then I think that's completely unfair. Punishing people who are looking for work and still need assistance is the last thing I want to do. If you're looking for work, if you are, if you are out there actively looking for work, that to me is the requirement. It's not finding work and it's not how much work you find. It is, it is the, are you or are you not using this as a safety net or are you using it as a hammock? And to the degree that you're out there trying to find work consistently, then, then that's the kind of people we should be helping. Those are the, those are the individuals who need assistance to get back on their feet. What I am against is, is, and I'm not against it for the cost, because even though the cost is, is relatively significant, it's nothing compared to unfunded liabilities like Medicare and Social Security. It's just a drop in the bucket compared to those guys. But what I am against in terms of, of the, the hammock is, is not so much that it costs money as it, as it utterly destroys human capital. It utterly destroys lives. It makes people who, who, who had a chance to do something with their lives, no matter how big or small, suddenly live a life where you are waiting for the first of the month so that your, so that your assistance check comes in. And I've had to wait for checks like that. And I have to tell you, it is, it is the most soul destroying thing in the world to have enough dependence on something that you feel that you have to wait for something to come to you. And at the same time, not be, not feel any sense that anything you do is going to help get you out of that situation. So if it turns out that all of the facts you have given me are correct and there's nothing missing, then needless to say, I'm against a program that penalizes people for finding 19 hours of work instead of 20 while allowing people who don't go looking for work at all to continue to get the benefits. I don't see how that makes any sense. Well, there's definitely something missing in the information I've given you so far, and, and I'll give you that in a minute. But let me just read a, a comment from Democratic Congressman. And this, by the way, this whole story is in Bloomberg, uh, the not the guy, the, the, the news publication. It's the um, same thing. Yeah, well... Um, Democratic Congresswoman Marsha Fudge of Ohio uh, said that the new regulation was worthy of, quote, the Grinch who stole Christmas. In an emailed mm -hmm. statement, she called it, quote, an unacceptable escalation of the Trump administration's war on working families. Mm -hmm. What would you expect a person who's dependent, whose livelihood is dependent on distributing government largesse would say? What, what would you expect a person who got elected by, by promising more federal benefits and whose entire purpose in life and the entire reason they're called the honorable this and the honorable that and ride around in limousines and get, and get taken out to dinner is because of their ability to bring home the bacon? What would you expect somebody like that to say other than that? It's always, it's always this response. This is, this is a, a, a version, I have to say, a toned down version of the hysteria we heard when, when uh, Newt Gingrich decided to enforce this kind of thing on, on Bill Clinton. And we were told that we would be seeing, as I said earlier, people just dying of starvation in the streets. And what ended up happening was, was that some significant percentage of the welfare roll, I don't remember what the number was, I want to say it's like 30, 40% of the people who had been on welfare simply dropped off because they had to show that they, that they qualified for it. And, and so uh, these kind of gloom and doom uh, things are not surprising to me. I'll tell you what is surprising to me. I'm surprising that she referred to it as a war on the um, on the the working class rather than a war on on minorities or a war on people of color. That's where I was really expecting this thing to go in this day and age. But the, look, the 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 you don't have to take my word for any of this. None of this stuff is is stuff that that I'm making assertions on. You go and look at communities where people are dependent on government assistance and not on their own initiative with help, when you look at those communities, you find ever increasing amounts of crime, drug abuse, uh, fatherless uh, children, broken families, diseases, all kinds of horrible things. And all of this is due to the fact that the Democratic Party under Lyndon Johnson decided that they were going to buy the votes of, of people of, of lower incomes with basically federal bribes. I'm not saying that everybody in this had a, had a, uh, a calculating political intention. Most people, myself included, tend to think, well, somebody's 
somebody who's help, you know, needs help. They're poor. They can't get help. Let's help them. But when you, but what you find out is that when that help is not attached to any possible sense of responsibility or any sense of, of, of it being dependent on a chance to get back on your feet, then it turns out that the charity, which is what it is in, in, in the individual case, certainly, and societal charity, the charity is no longer doing a public good. It's doing a public harm. It's perpetuating dependence and not only perpetuating dependence, dependence, strangely enough, and this is one of the great uh, quirks of the human uh, heart and, and one of its least um, noble aspects, but it's been my experience, certainly, that when people are in your debt and you help them, their general response to you is anger. So, Bill, this is the, the headline in Bloomberg. And then I want to get, uh, just for this final question here, into the specifics of what's really going on. The headline, it's in the politics section on Bloomberg. Trump administration moves to end food stamps for 700000 That's the headline. However, mm -hmm. when you get into the first paragraph, you quickly realize that what the Trump administration's proposed regulation is, which is just going to be published in the Fed Federal Register so that people can review this and get public comment, that the regulation is actually to make it harder for states to waive the existing work requirements that are already part of the Supplemental Nutritional uh, Assistance Program. And then there's one other thing you ought to know about this. Um, the, the existing requirements say that you need to be working or getting vocational training if you're able-bodied, if you're under 50, not disabled or pregnant, and you don't have any children under 18. So the group of people who could be harmed by this are, first of all, in the prime of their lives. Secondly, they're able to work. They're not pregnant. They don't have little kids. Um, so does that kind of take the edge off of that headline or will that headline shout so loud that nobody will be able to hear what the Trump administration is actually doing? Do you think, do you think that if you knew the facts that this headline would seem preposterous to you, what was the newspaper? Bloomberg, actually. Bloomberg. Yeah, yeah okay. All right. Well, there you go. That's all you need. Um, Bloomberg, the Republican billionaire who's going to be the savior of the progressive Democratic plan to I don't know that he has an the, editorial uh, hand in day-to-day -day business. Of course he does. Of course he does. If I had a magazine named after me, I would have some control over what went in it or else I wouldn't have my name on it. Um, the This... By the way, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are, who are still watching, what you just heard from Scott is an example of the real Scott. That's the Scott that is an, a friend of mine and an employee of mine and a, and a partner of mine, really more than an employee, because Scott understands how this game works. And he just spent the first half of this episode playing devil's advocate to show you how twisted these headlines are. When Scott just read oh, well, here's what the thing actually says, here's what the article actually says. That's the real Scott Ott, and it's the real Scott Ott because that's the real Scott Ott reporting the truth on the matter. This is what the article actually said. The article didn't say Donald Trump is going to take away welfare from people. He didn't say... It didn't say that Donald Trump is going to take food from the mouths of needy babies. It said that Donald Trump is going to enforce existing rules that are already in place so that states have to obey the existing rules dealing with the requirement to look for work if you are a healthy, able-bodied person under 50 without any disabilities and, and without any children to support. And if you were to put it this way, if the headline were to read Trump administration to enforce state laws regarding eligibility of non-disabled, healthy Fully well, capable it's people, actually to then, allow then, the states to, to uh, it's actually to keep the states from continuing to bypass existing federal that's law. That's what I was trying to get at. Yeah. Trump administration to eliminate states' um, ability to cheat on existing laws by not requiring that healthy, able-bodied, 50-year-old or younger people continue to look for work while they're on assistance, then somehow it lacks the sting of uh, Trump administration to put 700,000 people out into the streets where they can die like dogs of starvation in this heartless, heartless, uh, bureaucratic, uh, white nationalist, racist empire called America. And, and again, 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 what's so astonishing to me is that you have just pointed out, for which I am exceedingly grateful, and so are our, our viewers, what you have pointed out is that even inside the article, even inside the article, 
is an absolute indictment of the headline of the article. Inside the article, you find out that the headline is not only not true, it's anti-true. And, and so you have to ask yourself, why would a headline like this be placed in, a, in an article like this? And what is it about this news agency that is determined to obscure not only 90% of the facts of the story, but the operational 90% of the facts of the story and concentrate simply on an outcome without stating at all about what the defining uh, parameters for this outcome are, how the outcome was reached, whether or not the outcome has been tried before or fair, all of this, all in the article, none of it in the headlines. And so you have to ask yourself, why would an organization print an article and run a headline that was antithetical to the facts contained in the article, I, I find myself, I can't believe I'm about to say this, I find myself suddenly suspicious of, 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 of Mike Bloomberg's, uh, Bloomberg's uh, altruistic desire to, to help save society. I begin to think that perhaps he has some political agenda to advance uh, behind the, the, uh, the uh, front page of, of this so-called uh, news agency. And if you wonder why people no longer pay attention, if you wonder why Newsweek, which used to be relatively news oriented when I started reading it, if you wonder why it was sold for a dollar, now you know why. And when Newsweek was sold for a dollar, I don't remember who bought it, but whoever bought it overpaid. Ladies and gentlemen, our friends at the Patriot Post, America's News Digest, have helped to provide this episode of Bill Whittle Now to you. And the main supporters of this enterprise are the members at BillWhittle.com, who month after month, year after year, continue to faithfully support this enterprise because they read to the bottom of the story. Imagine. They're not afraid of the tough questions. Um, in addition, we'd like to thank our friends over at our Patreon page uh, at patreon.com slash Bill Whittle. Um, if you're not a member at BillWhittle.com and you just like what you saw in this episode, you'd like to go over and maybe make a one-time contribution, you can do that. Or you can make a contribution that's smaller than our uh, than our bottom threshold for membership at BillWhittle.com. Just to say, we're there for you, we support you, and Bill will be producing some Patreon-only content. And so I know I shouldn't have said that because what's going to happen no, no. is, Bill, some of our actual members who are paying monthly and annually to support this enterprise are not going to want to miss that. So they're going to go over to patreon.com slash Bill Whittle and also make a contribution through Patreon. I, I can't prevent them from doing that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are grateful for your support. So for stop, Bill Whittle- no. Stop, please. <laughs> for Bill Whittle- No, don't. I'm Scott Ott. Thanks for watching.